Ross sucked a cock last night. You know? It was no good. A giant <laughs> cock. Oh, my God, this show. I'm not even really all that mad anymore. I've given up on the product. I, uh, I actually did not watch the show until Tuesday evening, which means I had 24 hours of ample notice. All I knew about the show was that it was awful and that Triple H was hated. Mm-hmm. And uh, understood why. But because I had the, the, the uh, you know sufficient time, a full day, literally a full day to brace myself, when I watched it, it just kind of rolled off me. I never, with one exception, I never really got angry about anything. I really? just said, that was stupid. On to the next segment. See, I I, uh, I had somewhat of a similar experience. I didn't watch it until 11 o'clock last night. So I'd also had ample warning. Yeah. Had text messages sent all night. And, and uh, it was like that for a little while. I just kind of, I thought, man, what a stupid show and laughed it off. But by the end, it was just too much. It was too much by the end. Just too much. This is a horrible television show, everybody. And it's it's even worse. Like, I don't know. I was really mad last night. I don't even care all that much anymore because, let's face it, if WWE dies, who cares? Yeah. There's a lot of old wrestling that we can just go back and watch. It's not like I'm never going to have stuff to talk about. It's not like I'm not going to be able to do a radio show if there's no WWE. There's always going to be somebody trying to run wrestling, usually unsuccessfully. There's always going to be something to have a laugh about. And there's always going to be a million tapes and DVDs to go through. May not be a 24-7, but I'm sure I can get some DVDs somewhere. There will be a YouTube. There will be a YouTube. There will be there will be somebody to send me stuff to watch. I'm not worried. May as well go out of business. What a horrible show. It's not just that the show was bad, but it was like... You know, I've, I've seen bad wrestling shows before. I've seen shows with bad matches. I've seen shows with some bad angles and that sort of thing. But there's usually, like, something good on the show. Like, everybody's mentioning the, the Dr. Ken edition of Raw, which was a horrible show, mind you. It was a horrible show. But I, I bet that if I went back and, and checked out that report, I'll bet there was at least, like, a good match on there. I'm almost positive there'd be a good match, or at least some segment that was good. Should I do that right now? Why don't you look that up? Why don't you start talking about Raw, and uh, I'm going to go back and and uh, find the Jeremy Piven edition of Raw, and let's take a look at my, my uh, Raw report for that day, and let's find out if, in fact, there was not a single redeeming thing on the show, like last night, where uh-huh. there was not one single redeeming segment. All right, Raw opened with a recap of last week's walkout. Oh, look at that. August 3rd, 2009. I already found the date. Okay, go ahead. There were no announcers there. There were, without explanation, cameramen all over the place. The crowd was chaining Boomer Sooner, which should have been an omen in hindsight. Cut backstage where there was nobody. Hunter walked out of his office, walked around backstage. There were random WWE employees who had not walked out. Hunter was not the only man in the building. There were there there was uh, people there. There was someone to play his music, for example, and as I talked about the cameraman, and no one ever mentioned why only these people had stuck around. So Hunter came out. He did his whole entrance. Talked about the people who had walked out. Said they walked out of the fans. He said everyone was outside protesting and they had their gear, but none of them would perform for the fans unless he stepped down. He vowed not to quit. Said everyone who was protesting could kiss him. Quote: Where my cheeks meet which is a phrase I never need to hear again from anyone. His ass. I know that. That would, If you said kiss my ass, I'd have been fine. By the way, are you aware that the, the Dr. Ken edition of Raw was over two years ago? <laughs> no, I was not. God damn, how fast? Why does time move so fast? It's not just because I'm old. I was going to say we're old. I mean, Jesus, God almighty. Two years ago? It seems like it was like last week it was so bad. <laughs> All right, go on. Hunter said that if he had to, he would wrestle a broomstick for two hours, and he said the broomstick would give him a better match than most guys in the parking lot. This is one of the moments where a lot of people, and I understand why, a lot of people got very angry here. I would think the people in the parking lot most of all, but I just, you know, I laughed it off. What a stupid thing to say. And all I could think was, if they're that useless, why do you want them back? And if they're that useless... Why should I, as a fan, care that he walked out? So he threatened to have a match with this broomstick. It was uh, he was cutting 
as a promo, his delivery was great and people were going crazy for it. Cena came out and said everyone wanted him to join the walkout. Hunter hadn't even sent him a text. He listed all the fame, all, all, excuse me, all the uh, shitty bosses he had worked for: Vince Bischoff, Vicky, fifty-six celebrities, an anonymous computer, and Mike Adam Lee. Said if he got through that, he could get through Hunter's reign. He vowed to stay. <laughs> Go on. Seamus came out. Said two years ago he attacked Hunter with a pipe. Hunter didn't complain or take legal action. He came back and gave him the arse kicking of a lifetime. And he was sure to point out that today the result would be different, but he respected Hunter and he had tried to follow his principles. He didn't leave Ireland to sit out there with all those losers. And Punk came out, said he was the guy who made walking out look cool, but he wasn't, he didn't break his contract or his word. He was trying to prove a point to his company, not to a man. I have no idea what CM Punk's point is anymore or what change he's looking for. He's a, he was the guy who said he wanted change, and here he was sticking up for the establishment. You know, it's funny and ironic. It's not Punk's fault. No. But ever since Punk started talking about how he wants change and he wants wrestling to be fun again, it's gotten progressively worse. <laughs> yes. And you know what I mean? That's a, that's a true statement. Yes. It has gotten worse and worse and worse since his angle started. Yeah. So uh, he said uh, this whole industry is based around men solving their problems in these ropes. said he thrived on an unsafe working environment. He said, this is professional wrestling. It ain't ballet. Made fun of the guys having their hippie sit-in. And they said, what do we do now? Hunter said, well, why don't you wrestle you, Seamus wrestle Cena, all referee and punk can announce. And uh, at this point, we got like the, uh, there was a five or six, ten second stretch here where I very briefly loved the show. CM Punk and Hunter fucking around with each other. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I, I have no... I don't know why either, because Punk came off as the biggest dork at this point. It made me laugh. Eh, if that's all you care about, then there you go. Right. <laughs> if it made me laugh, would that not be the highlight of the show? I guess. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, I, I think it's also because I have no trouble believing these two men in real life absolutely despise each other. So watching them fuck around and be all chummy was odd. So Punk went to announce if he could wear Hunter's blazer. And they wrestled a little bit, went to commercial. When they came back, actually, before you go on, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna go segment by segment here. Raw versus the uh, 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 Raw versus the the Doctor Ken show, yes, the Doctor Ken show. I almost said Adam Lee show. Find out which show was actually worse. So that was the opening segment of this show. Let's go back two years. Two years, everybody. Back in time. My God, two years ago. It's it's unbelievable. So, two years ago, Raw opened with uh, Jeremy Piven coming out as the guest host, along with uh, Dr. Ken, and uh, they were very annoying. And as they're being obnoxious, uh, Piven running down and causing his pyro to go off, uh, they announce uh, Triple H versus Legacy. How ironic. We'll get into that. And uh, Miz came out to uh, save the day here on this show. Uh, He wanted John Cena. He wanted uh, uh, Piven to make it happen. And then uh, Cena came out. They plugged some damn movies and that sort of thing. This was where uh, Piven uh, announced that if Miz lost, I guess at uh, SummerSlam, he would be, quote, banned from Summerfest. Which, by the way, he lost, and he subsequently was not banned from Summerfest. For those of you that remember that stipulation, I another do not one at killed. All. Yes. So, uh, anyway, you don't remember Summerfest? I remember the line. I, I, don't, I don't remember the part about Miz being banned. And then uh, Cena said, if I uh, lose, please ban me from Raw for eternity. Uh, I wrote, and I quote, this was an all-time horrible segment, the worst kind of train wreck TV. So, yes, the opening segment on this show sucked as well. All right. All right. So Cena wrestled Sheamus for about two minutes. He went to commercial, wrestled for another minute. Out walks, out walks Vince McMahon. We last saw this man being relieved of his duties and weeping openly in the ring. Mm-hmm. Just walked out here, and uh, Vince said that he had to talk to Hunter, had everyone else leave. They just left, and uh, were never seen again. Oh, Punk was seen again. Cena and Sheamus were never seen again. Yes. They just vanished. They, just, yeah, they all just went away. Yeah. A man who, like, is no longer employed <laughs> came out and said, hey, can y'all please leave? And and uh, the rebel CM Punk was the first to just bolt. Yes. Wow. So... This man who, uh, who uh, yes, he was not employed, was still chosen by the board of directors to act as messenger on the show. Mm-hmm. And he explained to Hunter that since everyone had walked out and had threatened to walk out of future events, such as 
live events, pay-per-views, perhaps even WrestleMania. The board of directors could not handle this risk, and so Hunter was fired. Just out of curiosity, mm-hmm. so the board of directors called Vince and they said, listen, uh, we're sorry we gave you a vote of no confidence and took away the, the company that you created from scratch, but listen, we need you to, to deliver a message for us. Maybe he's looking for work. That's what happened. Now, 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 if, 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 uh, why don't we go back and say, okay, well, Hunter had delivered the message to Vince after he was named the new, uh, COO. So why wasn't John Laurinaitis the one that came out and, uh, and alerted Hunter that he was fired and he was a replacement? Wouldn't that have made sense? Why was Vince here? I don't know. Aside from the fact that he just had to get himself back on TV. Yes. Mm. So he announced that Hunter had been relieved of his duties and said, Hunter wasn't in charge. I'm not in charge. No McMahon is in charge. He said they were looking for a permanent GM, but for now, the inter- interim GM is Johnny Ace. Wasn't the interim GM a fucking computer? And didn't they say that exact same thing when they started that gimmick? That we're going to use this uh, anonymous GM until we find someone better? I don't remember the mean. I do! Because you know what? I pay attention. And unfortunately, I'm not rewarded for it. No. That's why this show sucks. That's why everybody hates wrestling nowadays. Yes. Back to 2009, we had Jack Swagger versus Evan Bourne. Which was a rematch from the week before where Evan Bourne beat Jack Swagger. So here in the rematch, Jack Swagger beat Evan Bourne clean with the Dr. Bomb. Okay. That's eerie. That sounds like it could have happened in any month of 2011. Of course. Because Nothing things never change. Nothing ever changes. That's why nobody ever gets over. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So he had another Dr. Bomb and uh, MVP ran out to save the, his little buddy. Well, that's what changes. People get out. Mm. People escape WWE these days. And we also had clips of uh, Shaq versus The Big Show from the week before. Anybody remember that? I do, actually. That was great. And uh, Cole was going nuts, saying it got all this press. And, uh, of course, that led to uh, nothing. So there you go. All right. So back in 2011, everyone who had walked out walked back in. John Morrison walked up to Johnny Ace, his new boss, said he sucked. So, again, why did he walk back in? (laughs) I don't know. He was pissed off. He d- took a stand against Triple H, and then an even worse person was hired as COO, so he just came back to work. I suppose. He was made to look a pussy. Oh, it was just beginning for this young man. Mm. <laughs> so, Johnny, since Morrison told him he sucked, he said, you have a match now. Get to the ring. Don't uh, don't even go change, even though Hunter had said they all had their gear. He set him down to the ring in the street clothes. Christian walked up, tried to suck up to Johnny Ace, and Johnny said, go wrestle Morrison. That was it. And the announcers walked out. So back in 2009, we had a backstage idiocy with uh, Dr. Ken and, and Piven. And Show walked in and said he wanted Shaq, and they said no. And Show said, well, fine, I want a match with you, Jeremy Piven. It'll get ratings, and it'll get the internet buzzing. That's what he said there in 2009. And uh, Piven said no, but well, listen, I'll give you a U.S. title shot against Kofi Kingston. And at which point Lawler uh, cut back and said, and I quote, I love Dr. Ken. That's what he said. That sounds like something Jerry Lawler would say. I also wrote, they had a clip from Piven's movie, and it looks like the worst movie in film history. Okay. Just keep that quote in mind. Mm-hmm. Morrison versus Christian. The wrestlers did not have their gear, but the referee did have his striped shirt. So the wrestlers did not have, to, did not have time to change. But the referee did, or they actually wear the striped shirts all over the place, like that one guy from the Urban Wrestling Federation. Could be. So they wrestled a few minutes, maybe three, and then Dolph and Swagger and Cody Rhodes, they all came out with Christian, and they distracted him, and they distracted Morrison, and Christian hit him with a spear and pinned him. And then they all took turns hitting their finishers and destroying this man. Didn't everyone leave because Raw had unsafe working conditions? That's why they left, yes. There were four men here assaulting one man. Well, yeah, but it's John Morrison. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Back in 2009, in the equivalent match, Mickey and Gail Kim, Mickey James, everybody, and Gail Kim beat Beth and Jillian. And uh, it was a match with four girls who could work. Beth got the win with the bitch clamp. And uh finish I wrote was kind of a mess. And at that point, Beth's name, for those of you that are pissed off when we called the bitch clamp, it didn't have a name yet. They called it, quote, the devastating move right there. <laughs> Cole, I'm sure. Yeah. So that segment didn't sound horrible. That sounds- so already right there, this is that show in 2009 was better than last night's Raw. 
Hunter confronted Laurinaitis backstage. Laurinaitis defended himself, said he didn't want the job. The board appointed him. And he spouted some other bullshit, and Hunter saw right through it and asked him if he had ever tried to pick up his teeth with broken fingers. At this point, Mark Henry came out. Actually, I take that back. Mark Henry came out. They went to commercial. Then after the commercial, they showed the John Hunter or John Laurinaitis versus Hunter segment. And then Henry cut a promo. So he came out and just stood in the ring for a good 10 minutes. He said that uh, he would take on anyone who was the number one contender. He showed clips of SmackDown, said he took Big Show's punishment, and he was still here. And he said, Venge- vengeance is mine. And then we heard Randy Orton's disembodied voice saying, no, vengeance is mine. And that was the match, Orton versus Henry again. So Orton was just standing by with a mic. Yeah. Waiting to see what Henry was going to say so he could make a witty comeback. Sure. I'd love to have seen that on a split screen. Back in 2009, Triple H was wrestling as well. He faced Legacy two on one. So Legacy here would have been DiBiase and Cody Rhodes. I believe so. Okay. Now, I know many of you are listening to this right now and you're sure you know the finish. Hunter beats both men. Well, guess what? You're wrong. In fact... They beat Hunter. He uh, was hit with the crossroads, and he was pinned. I wrote, and I quote, people were so shocked that they popped big. This briefly saved the show. At which point the show kind of fell apart as uh, Hunter woke up, grabbed the mic, and said, and I quote, ow, ow, that hurt. That did not go as I planned. I remember that. He was kind of, I believe he cut that promo from his back. Yes. He uh, he made light of this loss. He said he was going to, uh, maybe he will bring back the evolution. Nobody cared. Uh, he said now that he thought about it, Randy was a jerk. Batista got hurt all the time. And Ric Flair, quote, was out signing autographs at a VFW or something. He then said, maybe I'll make a uh, phone call. And if you're not down with that, I have two words for you. And everyone went nuts. And I quote here again. They made the entire thing seem like a big-ass joke, bearing legacy after they'd just gotten what should have been one of their biggest clean wins ever, revolting. So that did, in fact, suck, but it started out all right, which is more than I can say about anything on last night's show. Then we had a segment. Piven, Ken, and Chavo were backstage. And Chavo said that he loved Jeremy Piven on Fear Factor, which at the time I found fucking hilarious because Piven does look exactly like Joe Rogan. And uh, Piven then did not know Hornswoggle's name. He called him the Horn Gobbler, which is that right there, (laughs) funnier than anything on this show. And uh, he called Chavo, I believe, Charles or perhaps Charo. Although I did write another wretched segment. (laughs) The Horn Gobbler. The Horn Gobbler. All right. So in two thousand in two thousand eleven, Randy Orton versus Mark Henry. So the whole point of this awesome, awesome feud is that Orton and Henry had a match. Orton couldn't hit the RKO. Henry beat him. They had a rematch. Orton hit the RKO this time, but Henry Henry kicked out and then Henry beat him. So now they're having their third match here. Cody, uh, let's see, yeah, Orton is set up for the RKO. When Cody runs down to distract him, Orton, despite the distraction, managed to hit the RKO, at which point Cody attacked him for the DQ. As he was pinning Mark Henry. he Mark Henry was rescued. So much for Mark Henry the Indestructible. This fucking sucks. After all, this is the point where I got angry. And it went a minute. Yeah. Uh, this this was the point where I got angry. After all You want to get really done. angry? I'll, no. I'll make you angry. <laughs> Spoiler alert, everybody. You want to know what the main event is on SmackDown this week? You know, I looked at it and I already forgot. Mark Henry against Randy fucking Orton. Oh, excellent. Yeah. There you go. I hate, I hate this company today. (laughs) It's not doing very well. Yeah. So, uh, so much for Mark Henry's, you know, 15 years of being a mid Carter. They made him a main eventer in four months and pulled the rug right out, right out from under him here. As they always do. In one minute. As they always do. Horn gobbler. So... Then, apparently, they realized what they had done here. They tried to have Henry get his heat back. He laid Orton out with a pair of World's Strongest Slams. <laughs> I thought you laid him out with a pair. <laughs> <laughs> he may have done that, too. And again, so, yes, he, he hits his finisher on, on Orton, 
leaves. Cody then attacks like a vulture. He picks the bones and he hits uh, Crossroads. And uh, at this point, he called out a bagger. The bagger dashed to the ring in, I think, the greatest display of athleticism in this entire show. This bagger was Holland. He handed Cody a paper bag, and they put a paper bag on Randy Orton's head. Mm-hmm. And Randy Orton cackled like the Riddler or something. Lawler called it the ultimate humiliation. This this giggling was... The bags. Everything about this. And then the voice. This is phony. And now the giggling. And stupid. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? And not entertaining. I don't even know if it's funny or not, but... Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that I take credit for this because uh, I, I think Cody would probably be smart enough to figure this out. But uh, on third, when was it that I was ranting and raving about these fucking bags <laughs> over and, the and over fucking again voice. since June? Anyway, Cody, the house shows this weekend. He uh, came out no bags, and when he hit his promos, he didn't do the voice. So apparently, he's figured it out, and he's not fucking doing it on the house shows. But they're making him do this shit on television. Hmm. So yes, uh, one other note here: we had Randy Orton destroyed by two men. And uh, they assaulted him repeatedly and hit all sorts of moves on him illegally. And again, how is this not an unsafe working environment? Why I, don't you walk back out? I don't know. I'm excited at the idea of uh, of Randy versus Cody matches, but not if I have to see the bags and listen to the voice and the giggling. That's going to kill this for me. Just <laughs> Cody Rhodes is good at being Cody Rhodes. Yes. He doesn't have to be a, a movie villain. It's so fake. And we had... Uh, Back in 2009, Carlito versus Primo. Carlito, the laziest goddamn fucker in the world at this point, and uh, his brother who always tried his ass off. So, of course, Carlito beat him. Right. And Carlito wasn't working it. Primo was working his ass off, and Carlito was going through the motions, and Carlito got the win. Yeah. 2009, everybody. How things are done. So then Chavo came out for a match with uh, Horns Gobbler, and uh, Piven said... The midget got a case of adult chicken pox and couldn't compete. So Chavo's opponent would be three guesses, Vince. Big show. No. Oh. Mark Swoggle. Think about this. Ah. Two years ago, Mark Henry was wearing his giant red Kool-Aid man singlet and a leprechaun hat. And he came out and uh, obviously uh, beat Chavo. At least he won. At least he won. So there you go. Can you believe that? Two years ago, Mark Henry was dressed up as the Kool-Aid man. Dude, that's what Mark comedy. Henry was doing. For the, he was doing that for the first 14 and a half years of his career. Sure. And then it changed, not quite overnight, but sure, it changed quickly because when, because when you push a guy like that, it works and he gets over. Because he's... And, and the guy has talent. Because he's big he's, and scary. And he had a hell of a promo, actually, on he, the show. Uh, on Raw or the Raw you're reviewing? Uh, he had a great promo on SmackDown. He did a great promo on SmackDown and on Raw last night. Right. Anyway. All right. Go All right. ahead. The 2011 women's tag match. Rosa and Tamina versus Kelly and Eve. I like the part where Kelly was doing her back handspring in the corner and just about kicked Rosa's face off. And uh, Eve finally pinned Tamina with a moonsault. They cut backstage where Beth and Natalia were bummed. Probably they're bummed because they have to wrestle Kelly and Eve more. Then we had, uh, back in 2009, Piven met with Orton, wanted to be a special ring announcer for the Cena match, and Orton got angry. Shocking. And uh, scared them. And uh, I wrote at this point, to be honest, Piven isn't that bad. It's the goddamn Dr. Ken that I never need to see again, ever. And then we had a poll about Shaq versus the Big Show. Do they actually wrestle at that SummerSlam? Shaq and Big Show? Yes. No. No, they did not. I would remember Shaquille O'Neal wrestling at SummerSlam. Why in the motherfuck were they building this up then? I don't know. <laughs> to try I mean, and hold get, on a minute. To they try had and get to more have done buzz. something. Had to have done something at SummerSlam. No, they didn't. Let's see here. Good God, you're you're right. All of this talk about Big Show and uh, and Shaquille O'Neal led to Jericho and the Big Show against Crime Time at SummerSlam <laughs> that year. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> there you go. Jesus God Almighty. Okay, so. After the women's tag match, Johnny Ace came out. Oh, by the way, I yeah. forgot to mention. Uh, they had a poll. Who would win, Shaq versus The Big Show? Now, keep in mind, whenever you do a poll about a real fight in UFC, it's almost always 
51 to 49. Mm -hmm. You know, almost always, without exception. You know, sometimes I can't even think of a fight that they've had that's been, like, terribly skewed. But here they asked the WWE Universe, who would would win? And obviously they did not uh, fix the poll because the results had... 81% 81% of fans believing that Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> would beat the big show in a wrestling match. Awesome. Yes. They put this on their television show. Wow. <laughs> All right. So Johnny Ace came out. He quickly, casually, and trivially announced Alberto Del Rio, Del Rio will be defending his WWE championship on the pay-per-view against John Cena in two weeks. He made this announcement... And I wrote it down here, and by the end of the show, I had forgotten. It was done so quickly, with so little fanfare, by a man with so little charisma, that it slipped my mind. It got no reaction. He then start talk, started talking about how he was a man of, with, of ethics and morals, and it was time to do the ethical and moral thing. He brought JR into the ring. He very quickly called JR an ingrate on the, on, who uh, walked out of the man who gave him a job. And he fired him. Jim Ross did not give a shit. He tipped his hat to him, went out, shook hands with Lawler, grabbed his stuff, and split. You know what? This was uh, obviously this. I don't want to call it a shoot because he wasn't really fired, but uh, he was removed as he was blindsided. Do, yeah, this was yes. not in the script, of course. But you know what? I mean, let's be honest here. If Jim, if you're Jim Ross and you're sitting in the booth, and in the middle of the show. John Laurinaitis comes out and he calls you unscripted into the ring. Mm-hmm. You know exactly what he's going to say. You well, know, you know it, exactly what going, he's going to say. Something, something shitty is going to happen to you. You know, you're going to get fired. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, it, 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 uh, I mean, his, his, I could tell from his reaction that he was blindsided by it, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, it wasn't like he didn't expect that to happen when he was called into the ring. He had to know. I mean, he just had to know. Yeah. I mean, most people watching it that, that know anything about Oklahoma probably knew that this was what was going to happen. So, uh, anyway, whole thing's bullshit. So, 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 so yes. The, the, What's new? They worsened, their, sucks. they worsened their product, so Vince McMahon, the guy who runs the anti-bully campaign, could get off on bullying the grandfather with Bell's palsy. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you anymore. We had Sho and Kofi Kingston back in 2009. And speaking of commentary, Chris Jericho did commentary, and uh, Kofi made a comeback. And uh, Sho gave him a spear and was punching him in the corner. And the ref gave him a five count, and he didn't stop punching, and so he was disqualified. Ah, yes, the worst finish that he can ever do. And Jericho disqualified for kicking too much ass. Jericho screamed, and I quote, after the DQ, for what? For dominating the match? For destroying Kofi Kingston? Yes. I wrote, and I quote, Chris Jericho did commentary for this match, and it was great. So again, better than last night's show. We had Hunter on the phone backstage. He was uh, making a call, obviously. And uh, this was the the awesome phone call where Hunter says, "Uh, have you been watching Raw? And the guy on the other line said, no. (laughs) (laughs) Because why would anyone watch his fucking show even two years ago? I I hope he said, fuck no, or perhaps even what's Raw? And then they announced next week the guest host, Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. In 2011, Mason Riley and Air Boom. Mason Riley? the hell's his name? Mason Ryan. Mason Ryan. What is it? Andy Mason? I forget. That big Welsh dude and Air Boom versus Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler and David Otunga. There's a spot here where the spot would have been Mason would uh, hang... Swagger in the Tree of Woe, and Evan and Kofi would hit stereo uh, seated drop kicks on the apron. This sounds really simple. I don't know whose fault this was. I suspect Mason. But my God, did this go badly. Everyone was out of position. Horrible. So they did their match. Other than that, it was okay until uh, Evan got caught uh, going for a move, and Swagger hit him with an enormous power bomb, and... Uh, Sadly, this turned out, to be, it turned out to be a shoot power bomb. Evan was apparently hurt, and they went through things. And I don't think he was hurt. You think it was at work? I'm almost positive. All right. No, he might have been hurt, but they, they he were... He did not work the SmackDown tapings. I did see that. Well, yeah, he but I, 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 uh, I think that was a work. I do recall thinking at the time, holy shit, that was an enormous power bomb. Yes. So, 
I would not be surprised if it was legit. And eventually... Mason, I think it was a, a fake injury they'll forget about next week. Entirely possible. Yeah. Entirely possible. Eventually, Mason pinned Dolph with a spinning slam. So, yes, the big, clumsy, awkward muscle head is now going to challenge for the U.S. title. Not that that means anything anyway, but of all the people to have wrestled Dolph, they're picking the big, immobile guy. We had a Brodus Clay video. Now, we had a trailer here for John Cena's next film. It was advertised as an action comedy drama. Mm-hmm. It should have said horror love story as well. This movie looks like shit. <laughs> this no. movie, I remember. Come on, Vinny. This serious. I actually remember the clip they showed from Jeremy Piven's movie about the car sales. This looked worse than that. This looked worse than Hunter's latest movie. I don't know if this looked worse than that one. Uh, the one movie they were showing, they had commercials for it during Raw, but. It looks very, very awful, and I decided by the end I would rather watch The Marine again before I would see John Cena's new movie. Hmm. Much worse than what you said about Piven's trailer. In 2009, final segment of the show, it was Cena versus Miz, and uh, Piven came out, and I think he turned heel. It's hard to tell who was a babyface and who was a heel back then, but uh, he said he was a big fan of Randy Orton. And uh, he had handpicked every Lumberjack. Uh, I guess it was a Lumberjack match. Anyway, it was Orton, Legacy, Chavo, and Chris Masters, plus Carlito and Jack Swagger. These were the Lumberjacks. And uh, we had a bunch of spots, and Cena ended up uh, hitting Miz with the FU for the pin. They said it was the end of Miz on Raw. Write that down. In fact, that's what I wrote. (laughs) So then Piven went up to the top rope, went for a high cross. Cena caught him. Piven uh, dead-weighted him. Yes, that I remember vividly. Yeah. So then uh, Dr. Ken hit Cena with the cane, begged off. Cena uh, picked him up over his head, and uh, that also was hard because he didn't know how to go up. And tossed him on a Masters, Carlito and Swagger. He uh, whacked his head on the cement. That was the end of the show. (laughs) And then, after goddamn near killing himself, hitting his head on the cement... And uh, that actually got press, if I recall, uh, in different uh, media outlets. Um, He ended up doing an interview somewhere saying, oh, I was fine. Which they ended up playing on WWE television the next fucking week. Excellent. Yes. Uh, Utter shite, I described this show as. Uh, It was, in fact, one of the most horrible Raws of all time. But in conclusion, I can say that last night's show was, in fact, much worse. On that note, Alberto Del Rio versus CM Punk. Cole was openly serving as Vincent Man's mouthpiece, burying the people of Oklahoma for no reason other than this is what Vincent Man gets off on. And that's what the point of the show is anymore. It's not about entertaining fans, not about selling pay-per-views or making money. It's about Vince pleasuring himself. That's all it is. So let's think about this now. Alberto De Real versus CM Punk. You have the reigning WWE champion. You have the former champion who lost his belt when Alberto cashed it in. Between the two of them, you've got like eight world champion reigns. This should be like one of the biggest matches they could book. And they were at the wrestling and no one gave a shit. No one cared. Well, that's because you see uh, 800,000 people, almost a million people turned off this show between the first and second hours. <laughs> well, yeah, but the people in the building, do they leave as well? They may, they left mentally. I see. Clearly. Yeah. So... They wrestled around for a while, and uh, Ace interrupted, perhaps sensing that this is a boring, pointless match, and he announced a tag, a tag match of Punk and Alberto versus Truth and Miz. Now, I see what they were going for here. The idea was that Laurinaitis is working with Truth and Miz, so he wanted Punk and Alberto tired so Truth and Miz could beat them easier. The problem is, they wrestled for like three minutes, it wasn't particularly intense, and neither guy was all that beat up when they stopped the match. And you're the only person that told that story. Yes. I'm sure that's true. I, I, I figured out what they were going for. I recognized how badly they failed. So, Truth the Miz versus the incredibly fresh, ready, and healthy CM Punk and Alberto Del Rio. Mm-hmm. Wrestled around for a bit. Alberto hit a kick, but at the same time he sold his leg, tagged in Punk, and he bailed. So now it was a handicap match. CM Punk versus two men. 
CM Punk was loudly calling the entire thing. Always makes me laugh. And uh, it occurred to me here that the whole point of the walkout was that our truth and Mike Mizanin locked themselves in a cell and beat up a bunch of wrestlers and referees and cameramen with lead pipes. Mm-hmm. They were the impetus of the walkout. Mm-hmm. Now they are back on the show. Nobody walked back out. Of course not. No one cared. Of course not. But Vinny, you're the only <laughs> one thinking in the storyline. Yes. Yes, I am. And so eventually, after all this, oh, look at this. What was the finish of this match, Brian? Do you recall? I have um, forgotten until reading it right now. It was uh, it was uh, two on one in a in a handy, in a tag team match, mm-hmm. and uh, the ref was in the middle of giving them the five count when the the bell ringer rang the bell at one. Mm-hmm. Yes. So yes, they were disqualified for kicking too much ass. The worst finish you can do. Hunter ran out to save. Heels were sent packing, and Hunter and Punk were buddies now. Backstage, David Otunga and Johnny Ace were, were hanging out, and uh, the acting GM, John Laurinaitis, said he would ask the board to book a match. The board of directors, not our board. Acting the operative term there. Mm-hmm. To book Miz and Truth versus Hunter and Punk at Vengeance. So, someone else suggested this, that apparently... While Hunter is no longer in charge of Raw, he is apparently still Johnny Ace's boss. Therefore, Johnny Ace, while in charge of Raw, needs permission to book Hunter in matches. Yes, that is all correct. Jesus Christ. This show sucks. It was no good. So there you go, everybody. The uh, worst Raw in many, many years. One of the worst of all time. Right there. 